What is up guys, Team Eagles here with another video and the poll results are in and it looks like you guys wanted to see a shark deck profile. So I'm here to deliver that to you. But before we jump into the deck profile, if you guys are not subscribed already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, and obviously give the video a thumbs up because it does help my algorithm and it just makes me feel good. So go ahead and make me feel good guys. All right, let's hop right into the deck profile. So I'm not going to lie before we really dive into this. I made a little bit of an error. This is the second time that I've had to record this video today. <laughs> um, it's also the second day in a row that I intended on posting it. And yesterday it just didn't happen because I had other things come up. But uh, I did have to record this a second time. This is the second time I'm recording this in its entirety because I did make a significant mistake uh, as far as my wording goes in the last profile. So I had to change some cards around because my wording just um, made it seem like something else could be done that couldn't be done that I'm glad I caught when I was going through it and uh, doing all the edits. So basically what you're getting is the proper product in which you can actually do everything that I'm going to describe and I'm not going to make an absolute fool of myself. So looking at the monster lineup the best starter in the deck is our one copy or three copies of Butuniful princess technically there is a card that's basically another starter and that is three copies of buzzsaw shark they are essentially the same card um, because if you draw the Butuniful princess you're going into the buzzsaw shark but the reason i say Butuniful princess is better is because it dodges imperm and valor which is actually very powerful because once it hits the field and its effect triggers, it banishes for cost. So your opponent can't Valor it and they can't Imperm it because it leaves the field before your opponent even has time to attempt to activate either of those cards. So Princess is definitely a little bit better of a card, but it's going to get your buzz saw out anyway. So they're kind of the same in uh, some respects. So you got to play three of those because they are the best way to start your combos and get the deck rolling. Then we have, for some extenders here, three copies of Silent Angler. Silent Angler basically is going to allow you to special summon itself from your hand um, while you have another water monster on board, and that's really how good the card is. Like, you, you get this in another water, and you have a free XYZ monster. Seems, seems pretty good. Um, definitely some combos that come up with this that are significant to the deck. Then for other extenders, I have two copies of Tin Goldfish, which... In my opinion, is probably one of the worst extenders in the deck because it does get hit with Valor and Imperm fairly frequently, but it is still another extender, and if your opponent uh, hits it with a Valor and Imperm, maybe you have an additional extender in your hand that could kind of push things further. So the Goldfish is, is still pretty good. And if you can bait your opponent out of a hand trap, that's also just pretty neat. Then we have two copies of Silent Sea Nettle. This card's really good. The only thing that sucks about it is that it locks in waters um, for the entire turn. Like, you, you can only do water summons that whole turn, which kind of sucks in some ways, but in other ways it's not too bad. The really good part about this card is that it recycles water monsters from your grave, which allows you basically to reset up your Bahamut Shark and your Toad if you want to, even though the Toad can recycle anything in your deck. But you're basically going to be using your nettle to get a little extra special summons off as well as shuffling your resources back so keep in mind nettle is definitely a good card definitely play at least one of this i think two is a really good ratio and uh there are going to be a lot of hands where you draw this and you're like wow this is actually really useful so definitely play the the two nettles then the last extender that i play for two ofs is the two copies of lantern shark so I think that this card's really good. If you open up your Buzzsaw with White Mirror, basically you can combo off in a disgusting way. So Lantern Shark can be involved in that or your Silent Angler can be involved in that. So keep in mind, you do have a, a few options there to go off of. Then for the one ofs, uh, we only have two one ofs, one of them being the single copy of Right Hand Shark. You don't wanna draw this card, but like even if you do you probably have another extender so it'll be fine this card is usually going to be summoned off of something like buzzsaw shark so let's say the only real logical play that you have is a buzzsaw shark you can buzzsaw shark into right hand shark overlay them for something like crooked cook or your uh, number four stealth kraken 
and basically your opponent loses the game like that's that's how simple this deck is like it's literally you make an xyz monster and your opponent can't play that that's literally the entire point of this so the one uh right hand shark is really good and then lastly we have one copy of tenny spirit shathana this is the other extender in the deck or technically it's a starter because the only way you're summoning this out is if you don't control any monsters on your board um i think it's still good to play one of like this it can come up it's something else that you can go into which is obviously pretty important if you do want to cut it for something else by all means do so my recommendation would probably be cutting it for imperial order if you were to cut it for anything but considering there's a a probable ban list coming up that may ban imperial order um this card may just stay in here <laughs> but moving on to the hand traps i do play nine of them i have three copies of ash three copies of valor and three copies of imperm so i think that all three of these are pretty well I should say the Ash and the Imperm are very high impact right now. Like they're just fantastic cards and a lot of people um, just kind of crumble if you drop them at the right moment. So keep in mind that they're definitely the two best hand traps. However, the Veiler will come up uh, fairly frequently. So don't sleep on the Veiler. If you wanna play something like Nibiru, you can. The only problem is that Nibiru does conflict with one of the um, really important portions of this deck, which is Gozen Match. So Nibiru may not be your best bet, but if you want to play it, by all means go for it. I just think that the Veiler is probably your, your best bet currently considering the whole issue with Gozen um, popping up. So yeah, definitely, definitely keep that in mind, but I think that these nine hand traps are definitely the route to go. Those are all the monsters and hand traps though. We're gonna hop on to our spell cards now. We're playing three copies of Pot of Desires because let's just draw into our car our cards for our combo. Like that's basically all this card is here for. We're just gonna draw more cards for our combo and hopefully just make it so our opponent can't play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh with a bunch of sharks. Um, but yeah, three desires, really, really good. Um, you just hope that you don't draw another one off of the desires, which uh, with my luck will probably happen more often than not. Moving on to the other three of in the spells is three copies of White Mirror. This is the best spell card in the entire deck, hands down. Basically, you open this in Buzzsaw Shark and you end on three negations and recyclability, uh, which is actually ridiculous. So playing three of this, essentially, essentially, if you like I said, if you open up this in Buzzsaw or Beautiful Princess and Buzzsaw and uh, White Mirror, I mean, you you just you literally win the game. There's nothing your opponent can do, and uh, you're you're just walking off with a win uh that's gonna leave them pretty salty then the two ofs i do play two copies of ready fusion and one copy of instant fusion i think that these are very good extenders additionally i do play the single copy of one for one uh one for one is a starter but i kind of group it with these because it is just a special summon card which is pretty important because a lot of this deck is special summoning based so essentially the ready fusion and the instant fusion we do have some targets for them in the extra deck that you can summon out and make it so your opponent is um essentially going to be helpless <laughs> by creating more xyz monsters that they just can't play through so playing the uh the two ready fusions and the one instant fusion is pretty good and like i said the the one for one it gets you to beautiful princess which you know if you can get to that card alone you're probably in good standings for the game and you're going to be able to do a lot of damage to your opponent so these are uh four very important cards then we have for the last spell card one copy of call by the grave call by the grave is also something that i think uh, a lot of people should play and depending on the upcoming ban list every single deck may be playing this card i think that uh you know it, it's time that we free the sea i think max c should be back to three uh, i have some people who i've talked to who get very very triggered when i say max c should go to three and all i can say to that is suck it up and be a better player um max c is a perfectly healthy card and if you don't think Maxi is a perfectly healthy card, you should probably just stop playing the game because you just suck. Um, that's, <laughs> that's just that's just my opinion, though. Um, considering we have stuff like Cross of Designator, Ash, Droll, Call By, like that's that's ten cards alone that you can play that all out Maxi. So if you can't play through Maxi, I'm sorry that you suck. Um, just quit like <laughs> literally um but then lastly we have the trap lineup which i'm only playing one 
trap. I was playing multiple before, but I had to find space for other cards. Uh, so we were playing three copies of Goes and Match because opening Goes and Match plus Buzzsaw Shark is a win condition in itself. You literally, like, you seriously win the game just off of, of Goes and Match and Buzzsaw Shark. Um, which, if you guys want to see, like, a test hand combo tutorial video, make sure you go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. And if we get to 25 likes, then I will post a, uh, a video of test hands and combos so you guys can really learn in depth how to play this deck because uh, me showing off my deck profile is not teaching you it's just me reading cards and throwing them down in front of my camera but that is the entirety of the main deck we're going to go ahead and jump on over to the extra deck so i can discuss exactly what we're playing okay so it is now extra deck time and as you can see here we have one of the greatest xyz monsters ever created in that of totally awesome now totally awesome is a key portion of the deck we are playing two copies of it alongside two copies of bahamut shark so if you open up the white mirror and the buzzsaw shark you're essentially going to be ending on two toads and uh, another card in the extra deck that we'll get to a little later, which is the Utopic Draco Future. So playing these cards is very important. I would not play three of either of these, though. I do not think it's necessary. Playing two and two is perfectly fine, so definitely keep it to that ratio. They can recycle themselves because of the Toad effect in Grave, and you could also use your Silent Sea Nettle to shuffle them back, too, so keep that in mind. Then the other two ofs, I have two Stealth Kragen and two Stealth Kragen Spawn. So I think that two and two is a proper ratio. Um, ironically enough, I've never had to summon out Stealth Crag and Spawn. It's, it's never come up, which is crazy to me because you would think that it would come up, but this card has literally never hit my board. Like usually I get the Stealth Kragen out and my opponent is in a losing position, especially if you get Stealth Kragen and goes and out, then they really just sit there and cry because they have nothing they can do so self dragon fantastic card absolutely love it and uh the spawn is there for backup just in case you need it and we have for the one of xyz uh rank force we have one copy of abyss dweller this is the last water xyz that we play it's not a super graveyard heavy format but there are some decks that playing this card does just win you the game so keep in mind that uh you know dweller is actually one hell of a card and dweller will put in a lot of work for you whether you realize it or not then for the other xyz uh rank four that we play we only play one other rank four xyz and that's the best xyz in the deck which is our number 59 crooked cook i know what you're thinking hey this is a sharp deck why is crooked cook the best card in the entire deck well, basically, if you make this card in defense position with a right-hand shark as one of the materials and you don't have any other cards on your field, your opponent loses the game. Um, they can't. They actually physically cannot play the game, which is crazy because they can't get over this card. Like, they can't target it. They can't destroy it by card effect battle. Like, it's unaffected by all card effects. And on top of that, because the right-hand shark would be a material, it can't be destroyed by battle, which is just nuts. Um, so, Crooked Cook, really, really good card. Uh, best XYZ in the extra deck. Your opponent just kind of has to sit there and like wait to lose <laughs> that's basically what it does there's some people who are actually playing this card in exodia decks right now which is just hilarious to to me personally um please don't think that i'm advocating for exodia decks because i'm not uh get a better decky scrub but we're we're just advocating for the fact that this card will win you games with this deck uh which is absolutely insane then for our our one of our boss monsters i guess you can call it we do play one copy of zeus this doesn't come up excessively it comes up occasionally but not excessively still think the card is definitely worth playing as a one of um there are going to be times where you can wipe a board with it like what you can do is you can make a bahamut shark because bahamut shark is 2600 you can attack with the bahamut shark main phase two detach to summon a toad and then you could go ahead and um, overlay a zeus on top of the bahamut shark and basically have a negation and a board wipe which is actually uh pretty darn powerful ironically enough so zeus is actually really good then as i mentioned before we do play the utopic future and the utopic draco future so these uh come up with the white mirror and buzzsaw combo or the beautiful princess white mirror combo whatever you're drawn to there are some times where you're just drawn to enough extenders too to where you can do this combo but that's a little more um a little a little less common i should say so keep in mind that that's not going to pop up all the time it will occasionally but not all the time 
typically it's going to be your white mirror buzzsaw combo that gets you here basically you're going to end on two toad and the draco future which is uh pretty darn nuts then lastly we have our ready fusion slash instant fusion targets and that would be our rare fish and our mud dragon of the swamp so if you're a budget player and you're watching this video going whoa like i can't afford utopic draco future like that card's like 30 dollars. it's it's just really really pricey well i do have good news for you and if you can't afford like rare fish um or ready fusions like stuff like that i have good news for you you can pull those engines out for more copies of this and then you can play super poly and i know you're sitting there thinking to yourself why why on earth would i play super poly in this deck that just seems absolutely absurd. Please, please, please guide me, Mr. Dueling Man. I, I don't get it. I need an explanation. So here's your explanation. If you have a Super Poly while you have a Stealth Kragan on board, your opponent's entire board can be made into a Mud Dragon. All monsters on the field become water. And if your opponent has any two different types of monsters, all you have to do is flip a Super Poly, discard a card, and you make a Mud Dragon. And then you have a Stealth Kragan still, which is another pop, which is crazy. So keep in mind that Stealth Kragan with Super Poly is really good. So if you're a budget player and you can't afford some of the stuff, please play that combo. It's really, really good. It's really cool. Uh, for my deck in particular, I'm not playing it because I didn't have to worry about the budget aspect of things. However, if I was a budget player, that's 100% the list that I would be playing because it is pretty darn good. But that is the extra deck. Let me go ahead and jump on over to the side deck so you guys can see just exactly how we are countering the meta uh, for games two and three. Alrighty, so now we're on to the last section of the deck, which is our side deck. We're going to see how we counter the meta. And starting off, you can see directly on the top of our side deck, a very important side deck card currently and definitely for the future in that of Token Collector. So Token Collector is obviously very good against, uh, you know, your Sword Soul matchup. Most people know that. However, one thing that people should probably realize if they haven't already is that with the brave token engine coming out this card is going to be decent against that too because you get rid of a token that that seems pretty good um i think that token collector is just a fantastic card if you don't have a place out of this already i definitely encourage you to pick up a place at depending on the deck that you're playing obviously you can kind of alter that ratio but definitely own a place out of this because it's going to help you out a whole lot in the near future then for the other hand trap that we side deck, we have three copies of Droll and Lockbird. As many people know, this is good against a lot of decks. Obviously, any kind of rogue deck that searches a lot, this is going to be putting a damper on their plan. However, there is something else important to note, and that is the fact that this card is really good against the Bird Up matchup. It's really good against the Invoked Shadow Dogmatica matchup, and uh, it's also good against Drytron. So those three decks alone, decks that do see a decent amount of representation, and this card completely counters them. So definitely, uh, definitely play your draws. It's worth it. Then our our board breaking stuff, we play our three copies of Dark Ruler No More. I think that most people would agree that Dark Ruler No More is a crazy, crazy card, and I want everybody to also keep in mind that you do have other options such as Droplet and Chalice. I wanted to try and main deck Chalice, but it was not easy to try and find space to do so, so I just opted to stick with side decking the Dark Rulers. If you wanted to play Chalice in the main deck, I suppose you could always pull out the three copies of Effect Veiler and play Chalices instead, but it's totally your choice. Dark Ruler is, however, in my opinion, one of the best side deck cards to break your opponent's boards apart. Speaking of other board breakers, we also have three Lightning Storm and three Evenly Matched. Now, I think that something that is very, very cool about both of these cards is how they kind of just counter a lot of decks. Um, Evenly is really good against Eldritch, and right now there's actually a decent amount of Eldritch being played, which is not too much of a surprise. I mean, the deck has been around for, you know, like, well, I think two years now, something like that. And it's had some sort of representation in almost every single format, just because it's it's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, Eldritch is actually decent in the hands of the right player. 
And if you know how to play your trap decks, you know how to play your trap decks. So evenly is something that will definitely counter that in addition to other matchups that, you know, you just have to get rid of their board. And the Lightning Storm obviously being very versatile in that of you have the ability to choose between monsters or spells and traps. So it depends on the matchup you're playing against. Sometimes your virtual world opponent, or I'm sorry, well, your virtual world opponent too, but your sword soul opponent will make the mistake of putting all of their monsters in attack position. And if they don't get something out like a Baron, then they just kind of lose um, because you can just lightning storm wipe their board because they got uh, lackadaisical and they put all their monsters in attack position. So sometimes that'll help you out a whole lot. But that essentially wraps up the entirety of the deck profile. I think that this deck has a lot of potential going forward. I think right now it has a lot of potential too. Um, that's kind of the neat thing about a lot of the roguish type decks is that a lot of them have the ability to top and do very well in the hands of the right player. That's one thing that I try and mention to people so much is that, you know, any deck that is like a decent rogue contender technically can be competitive right now in this format. And if you have a deck that's consistent enough too, that also helps. Basically in this format, consistency is key. If you have something that can outgrind decks, then you're probably gonna do fairly well if you know how to pilot it properly and you know the small interactions. But that's my small miniature rant as to how to uh, kind of go about the format as it is. As you guys know, I do uh, some meta profiles, but now I'm basically just doing, you know, all these cool roguish type decks because I think they're a lot more fun to profile and a lot more people get enjoyment out of them than seeing the same deck profiles from decks that have topped over and over again. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, obviously give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, and uh, just keep showing me all the love. We are trying to reach 2,000 subs by the end of the year. That's our new goal. 2,000 subs by the end of the year. I think we can do it. We, we've got plenty of time. I think we're already at like 1,022 or something like that. So we only need 978 more. So we'll get there soon enough. But once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And this is Team Yugi Fields signing out.